This is NC Spin, an unrehearsed discussion on issues of interest to North Carolinians. Now, here is your moderator, Tom Campbell. Welcome. You've heard and read the spin the media and the politicians have put on the issues of the day. To get the correct spin on what's going on in North Carolina, let's introduce you to our panel of experts. They include Becky Gray with the John Locke Foundation, also Carolina Journal. John Hood, also with the John Locke Foundation. Chris Fitzsimon from NC Policy Watch. And Campaign Connections' Brad Crone, also a consultant and PR guy and all those other kind of stuff. If there's one word that best describes the year 2013 in North Carolina government, it's the word reform. We've heard about tax reform, transportation reform, Medicaid reform, economic development reform, and reforms at the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. This special edition of NC Spin is going to examine the reform movement in North Carolina, asking why people thought the reforms were necessary, what's been proposed, and any suggestions our panel would make to future reforms. Let's get started. Brad Pat McCrory was elected governor in November. He had about eight weeks to assemble a cabinet, get up to speed on issues, plan for his inauguration. After being sworn in the first week in January, he had to get a team functioning, especially since the legislature started work in late January, and put together a state budget and present it to that legislature in March. So, before we get too far into reforms, wouldn't it be better if the governor actually took office either a year before the long session of the legislature or, or, or let them come to long sessions on even-numbered years? What do you think about this? Tom, when I was 23 years old, I started a weekly paper in my hometown in Clayton. And I'd never laid out a page, news page, before until the night I had to go to press. And I learned real quick that when you jump in the deep end, you're either going to swim or you're going to sink. And this is what's happened to the governor. He's learning that he's, he's got to swim if he's going to make this happen. Long uh, end of this is, no, we don't need to change. The, we, we elect our governors in presidential election years. That gives the most North Carolinians the opportunity to cast a ballot in the gubernatorial election. So uh, there are challenges, yes. But anybody who's running for governor, whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, you know those challenges going in, and you've got to either swim or you're going to sink. And you don't have much time to do it. Let's move on to the subject of tax reform. Becky, the, the legislature made a big fanfare of what they call tax reform, which essentially amounted to just cutting personal and corporate income taxes and closing a few loopholes in the tax codes. There was some suggestion this was only a beginning to tax reform. When the legislature returns in May of next year, can we expect to see round two? And if so, what can we expect? I think absolutely we're going to expect it. We heard several legislators through the process talk about that tax reform was not a destination, it was a journey, and that this was a beginning of comprehensive tax reform. So I think clearly are some of the things that I think they're going to look at, as you mentioned, they eliminated some of the exemptions and carve-outs within the tax uh, sales tax system. I think we'll see additional um, movement towards that, looking at more of those carve-outs that they can get rid of. I also think that we're going to see some additional child tax per child tax credits. That was one thing that... Um, are when we talking about they, the earned income uh, tax credits or are you you're talking about additional credits? For uh, additional credits per children. child. Yeah, yeah. Those, those kind of things. I think there, were, there was a movement towards, to, towards doing that. I think as the economy begins to recover and there's more revenue coming in, that there will be more options for additional tax reform that I think clearly we're going to see. Anybody else hear anything about tax reforms that, that might uh, be on the table? Well, one of the big stumbling blocks, I think you to be is, is revenue. And uh, the Revenue Department's been paying really close attention to receipts. There's some concerns that they're not necessarily hitting the mark as far as the revenues. And if they come in and... So far as projections that were right, made for uh, this year, right, this The rate of growth at 2.7 percent. They're, they're meeting the standards from last year, but they're not making the growth of revenue increases that they projected. So a lot of it's going to depend on how much money they've got in the bank next May, uh, next year. That, I think that's true. I think actually major tax legislation will probably wait till 2015, but there'll be some action in 2014, some of it related to how much revenue is coming in and, and what they want to do in the short session. There, was two, there were two different reports recently about North Carolina's economy and its implications for revenue, and one of them suggested a pretty rapid rate of growth in 2014. The other suggested a fairly rapid rate of growth. Most likely, the first six months of the fiscal year are going to be fairly weak, and the second six months 
or where the difference will be made up. Chris, any any notion you've heard on uh, tax reform? Well, I mean, let's also remember that 2014 is an election year, and I think uh, even if they want to reform or a cut, as they did this year, as you mentioned, it really was more cutting taxes on, on wealthy folks and, and out-of-state corporations and raising taxes on small businesses and a lot of other people. As much as they might want to do that kind of thing again or cut taxes on other people, it's an election year, and there's going to be huge pressure for a pay increase for state employees and teachers. Uh, revenues, I think, will be a little down. And remember, the, the second year of the biennium is when the tax cut they passed this year really takes effect and starts costing the state some money. When are, we, when, are, when are we really going to feel the effects of... We're the going risk? to see a few hundred dollars, a few hundred million dollars worth the second year. When it, when it fully kicks in, we're talking about $600 million a year. So that's going to affect state revenues. That's the point of a tax cut. Wow. And the whole purpose of tax reform was to increase the business climate here in North Carolina. The Tax Foundation estimates that with this tax system that is currently in place, not, with, not even talking about what they might do in the future, that this brings North Carolina's business tax climate from 44th to 17th. Well, there's a lot, of, there's a lot of, of economists that disagree with that, yeah, including Mike Walton and a lot of others. Was that they got rid of yes, the $50,000 exemption for small businesses, uh, and most small businesses in North Carolina are sub S and, and LLC type corporations. So this was a big hit to them. Well, they got some offsetting cuts on the other end, but you're right, they're self employed people. Uh, who lost that break, which was passed in 2011, at the time roundly attacked by Democrats and liberals who suddenly have discovered that it was a good idea. It was actually a bad idea. Republicans said it would create way. all these jobs. Well, it actually did create jobs, and but it was the wrong in North Carolina way. Now. Well, actually, really, in 2012, North Carolina's job growth was pretty strong. That's correct. That's, what's so interesting to me is, is the fallacy that some Republicans have was that we had a, a, a terrible business environment. Forbes magazine, Site Selection magazine, consistently ranked CEO North Carolina surveys. as one of the top places in the country Which to do business. Which illustrates that those rankings are idiotic. If North Carolina's economy is bad, which it clearly was and is, and the economy was performing worse than all these states that were lower ranked, that doesn't tell you that North Carolina had a great business climate. It tells you that those business climate rankings are junk. They're just junk. And on that yeah. subject, you can watch NC Spin anytime you want. Just go to our website, ncspin.com. Click on the YouTube button on the right-hand side of the page. We post each week's show on Friday, so you can view us anytime you like. And while at ncspin.com, be sure to sign up for our weekly email newsletter, Spin Cycle, and follow us on Twitter at ncspintweets. Four ways to keep the conversation going, ncspin.com, ncspin on Facebook, Twitter at ncspintweets, and Spin Cycle. We look forward to hearing from you. When we come back after these messages, transportation reform. NC Spin will return after these messages. Fishing isn't just part of my job, it's my life. It's a part of who I am and how I was raised in Eastern North Carolina. It's how I put food on the table for my family. It's hard work, but I love what I do. There's something special about knowing that my long, hard days help feed friends, neighbors, and people in North Carolina. It might not be glamorous, but fishing is my life. The cost of everything has gone up dramatically over the last 75 years. With one exception. Keeping electricity affordable. That's the power of your co-op membership. Learn more at TogetherWeSave.com. North Carolina's Touchstone Energy Cooperatives. Looking out for you. We now return to NC Span. We continue our special program on reforms. Let's talk about tax reform. John, one of the reform areas that didn't get a lot of media play will have a significant impact uh, concerns transportation. I said tax, but it's transportation. John loves to talk about raising taxes. That's yeah. right. <laughs> At the urging of Governor McCrory, the legislature approved uncoupling the formula for funding for road construction. Instead of distributing the money out equally among the 14 districts in the state, this reform would allocate money supposedly according to the highest priority projects. We haven't really felt the impact of this, but how big a reform was it really? This was huge. This was probably the biggest unrepo lightly reported big change in North Carolina public policy in many years. 
I actually thought it would be really difficult for the legislature to rewrite North Carolina's highway funding formula. It's been controversial for decades. Rural areas were always trying to prevent reform because they were afraid they would lose money. What happened was a bipartisan vote in both chambers. The governor proposed it. They did it. It changes the formula quite a, li quite a lot. If you want to think about it in three numbers, it's 40, 30, 30. 40% 40 of the money, uh, and this is mostly but not entirely highway funds, we should say. 40% of the money will be uh, allocated statewide, statewide according projects. to objective criteria. There's no political influence. Uh, another 30% will be devoted to large regions, not the 14 highway areas, but larger regional groups. And most of that will be objective data. There'll be a little bit of local input. And then the final 30% will go back out to those 14 divisions, uh, and about half with objective data, half with the, the political input. Uh, I think that when you minimize the ability of people to go around the hard numbers, you're going to get better results for North Carolina, and that's really what the reform is about. But Chris, the Joint Legislative uh, Transportation uh, Committee had a meeting last month in Raleigh, uh, and, and it was interesting to me to note that some of the, the legislators were saying, you know, we really didn't get as much clarity on this as we thought. The, the big question is, uh, who does make these decisions? John says they're data-based. But uh, obviously there's some human element involved in making them too. Well, isn't there? there's a human element. It's interesting. John's right that it passed with bipartisan support and it seemed to be everybody thought this was a good idea, but it almost seems now is that they're finally reading what they've done. And I think some folks are in the rural areas especially are having some uh, second thoughts, not just Democrats, but Republicans as well. I think there, there's some definitions in this reform about what is a statewide highway. We've talked about that before on the show. What does that mean? Somebody has to define those things. Uh, so I think there's plenty of room in here for some still some shenanigans. I hope it doesn't happen. I thought the Democrats didn't do a very good job of transportation policy. I hope we can get the politics out of it, but I'm, I'm not as optimistic as some people. Well, that, speaking of shenanigans, <clears throat> I think that's what this oversight committee, uh, Tom, that you mentioned, is looking at. The <clears throat> DOT is looking at the different criteria and how to prioritize those criteria within that 40 percent category that John mentioned. Um, so I think that they are aware of where the shenanigans, there's, there's room for shenanigans, and they're trying to really keep an eye well, on it and on close the, that up that to the certain back that they in the can. 80s. And I can tell you, powerful legislators, influential DOT board members, and the governors made the decisions where those roads well, were. The board here. has been, actually, Governor Purdue has already changed the board. She did. Right. It doesn't she have did. that kind of role. Yes, I got that. Well, the needle they're trying to thread is, is to provide transportation dollars into the high growth, high density areas such as Charlotte, Greensboro, Winston, and Raleigh. That's where the economic hub of the state is. That's where our transportation dollars need to go. And we need to stop thinking just about building asphalt. We've got to look at other transit I got options that, but, for the state. But John, you've talked about this quite a bit on the show before. We really haven't addressed, I mean, if we want to talk about transportation reform, we got to talk about funding. Mm -hmm. And we haven't addressed that. We've not uh, faced the music on that issue. Uh, the facts are that the gas tax was capped at 37 and a half cents a gallon. We've got a declining usage in gallons of gas because of, of more efficient vehicles. Uh, and, and of the three billion dollars a year, roughly, which we generate uh, in, in primarily transportation and road funding, the numbers are going down, 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 while we're getting huge, we're getting 100,000 new people every week, every year, coming into North Carolina. What's it going to take to get our leaders to really, to, uh, to get the political will to do something? Well, this, this is one of the most difficult political issues in the state because North Carolinians believe, well, our gas tax is one of the highest in the country. They're just wasting the money. It's not really what's going on. Remember that North Carolina, unlike most other states, doesn't have county roads. So our property taxes are lower than the rest of the country because our gas tax is higher. If you work, all, work out all the math, our total tax revenue uh, derived from cars and, and fuel and spent on highways is not high. It's actually low by national standards. Now, I don't think there's any appetite for raising the gas tax. Also, the car tax is an issue because not only are cars more fuel efficient, they're also more durable and they don't turn over as much. They don't get as much car tax revenue either. So I think the solutions are going to be partly in the urban areas, in certain corridors, tolling, which we already see in Wake County and we'll see in other places. And I also think they need to figure out a way to reduce the continued uh, transfer of some highway funds to the general fund. Well, the other issue that John uh, alluded to, most states only fund 20% of the road mileage in their state. 
leaving the other 80% back to the local communities, the cities and counties and so forth like that. We flipped that. We're 80% state, 20%. And have been for years. We yeah. have since now, 1921. Is right. there going to be any movement whatsoever to, to revert back and start asking these local communities to start paying a better, bigger share? Well, in the last several years, there have been movements to allow, to authorize local governments to do so, and particularly in some of the really high congested areas around Charlotte, Mecklenburg, and in that area. Cities and, and some counties, I believe, are authorized to do that. Now, it's not a mandatory thing, but they can choose to if they don't want to wait for the DOT to do all of these priority funding kind of things. Brad, you're a political consultant. 2014 is going to be an election year. Are they going to do anything at all in 2014 this short session no yeah but the, no I'm, I'm dead serious so we just have keep well, every, we're just gonna keep kicking this football well, down the every, field well, every solution no matter what you think about it needs you need you need so you need more revenue do you want to raise a property tax and be a local politician do you want to raise a gas tax and be a statewide politician running for office and i think the answer is no you know it's important for uh, all of this is an important discussion but north carolina's roads have gotten a lot better in the last five years. According to the And that is, civil that is engineers. Uh, evident in a number of different right. ways. And that is because not just that projects have come on board that were delayed, but that we're, North Carolina is getting better at spending its highway dollars. Well, and it, yes. And, and we've worked on our bridges, which mm -hmm. helped that rating quite a bit. When we come back after the messages, we're going to take on Medicaid reform. NC Spin will return after these messages. It's true. Farming is different than it was 50 years ago. We know consumers have questions about how our food is grown today. North Carolina livestock farmers want you to know that they're using the most responsible and caring farming practices to feed our state. NCAnimalAg.com the North Carolina Medical Society is committed to a healthier North Carolina. We feel as an organization representing over 14,000 physicians that we have a responsibility and an obligation to help our citizens become more healthy. And by doing this, we want to help educate them about ways in which they need to keep themselves healthy through good nutrition, exercise, and maintaining a healthy lifestyle. These ingredients will help not only individual citizens become and maintain a healthier outlook on their lives, but also help contribute to having a healthier state. We now return to NC Spin. Welcome back to our special program on statewide reforms. The subject is Medicaid. Chris, Medicaid costs North Carolina about $13 billion a year with the state portion about $3 billion. In recent years, we've had problems with companies billing for services they didn't perform, cost overruns, management inefficiencies, and Governor McCrory took office recognizing that Medicaid, Medicaid desperately needed reform. He proposed we go to a system of managed care contractors, a move he said would lower administrative costs and contain cost overruns. Legislature, however, didn't particularly agree with this proposal and instructed the governor to go back and study it some more and come back with another idea. In the meantime, we're still having all these cost overruns. When can we expect to see some new proposals and what do you think they'll con contain? Well, I think the governor uh, and his team seem committed to some form of privatization, which uh, I'm concerned about. Uh, if you look at experiences in other states, what happens is you'll have two or three bidders for the Medicaid contract. They'll get it. Then the next year when the bid, then they'll, they'll dramatically raise the rates when they're trying to get the second contract and the state is caught uh, in a bad place. Uh, I think it's, there's several things to remember here. I'll only cut, touch on a couple of them. One is we've had cost overruns in Medicaid. The real question is why can't we actually forecast it? Uh, the, the Purdue administration did forecast it and say it's going to go, it's going to rise more than you guys think it is. The legislature it. wouldn't fund it. And now some of that has been described as cost overruns. That's the first thing. There certainly are inefficiencies uh, and we need to fix them. Two other, the Community Care of North Carolina, which is an award-winning program that Richard Burr recognized, has kept costs down. I think we ought to think about expanding that instead of turning it over to a private, uh, to a private the you know provider and why, why would we want to send money out of North Carolina's <clears throat> health care providers and doctors who are providing services for their indigent and give it to Wall Street investors well Becky one of the things that that uh, really prompted uh, Governor McCrory was an audit done by State Auditor Beth Woods <clears throat> which essentially said that DHHS was a mess uh, and he's cleaned that up hasn't he uh, well here, here's my question big mess. here's my question Still is, is this agency too big 
I mean, should we break this up and have a Medicaid uh, division and then the rest Social of Social services. Yeah. And things. That's, that's certainly one way to think about it. I think, I think you're right. Um, it, it is a mess. It, it was a mess. Um, huge overruns. And the, the audit that Beth Woods did in January showed that the administrative cost within DHHS and the contracts are way overpaid, overbid, very little efforts at cost containment. So you've got to get all that under control. Whether you separate it out or whether you leave it under one umbrella, you've got to get those kind of costs under control. And I, I think look. that's what they're looking at. And this Medicaid reform package that the governor has proposed, um, the General Assembly, you're right, did not really give the go-ahead, but in the budget there are provisions for him to go ahead, to look at it, to study, to move forward with it. So we've got to start getting this under control. And I think just separating it is not going to solve I, I've the I've got problem. to jump in one quick second. I'm sorry. Carol Steckel, who's the Governor McCrory and Secretary Vosch's Medicaid director, said at a at legislative meeting the administrative cost part of that audit was unfair because they compared North Carolina's state-run program to states that have a small version of state-run program and then a managed care program, and they didn't call, count the managed care administrative costs. And she actually, this is McCrory's own Medicaid director, disputes the findings that we have an extra high administrative cost in our Medicaid program. John, I, I, I keep coming back to, you've said on this show many times, there are three variables that you play with with Medicare. Eligibility, services provided, and the amount of benefits you provide. In all the discussions that I've heard about uh, Medicaid reform, I've not heard anybody talking about trying to change any of these variables. No, that, that's what the managed care uh, rebid is about. Let, let's, no, it's let's, a cost containment let's, let's, thing primarily. Th th that's correct. The cost containment comes from changing how the uh, services are provided. It doesn't and how touch eligibility or services. Well, you, you can't touch eligibility through this process. Let, let's just be clear about this. There's a lot of confusion here. North Carolina already has a contractor. It's a private contractor. There's only one bidder in its community care. It gets the business without having to compete with any other bidder. That's the current process. No, John, that's and, just not right now. Oh, the they, they CCNC bid, they, is a collaborative effort between the hospital community and the medical society and the providers in the community providing that service. They are the only organization in the state that's really got boots on the ground doing follow-up that is actually reducing recurrence back into the ERs and providing service, and since nursing Carolina, services since to North Medicaid Carolina patients. North Carolina has one of the fastest growing <clears throat> Medicaid programs since 2010 in the country, in the country, and community care has been taking credit for a brief period of time when we didn't have a fast-growing Medicaid program. They have to take responsibility for the fact that since 2010, our costs are out of control. A single-source contract is never a good way to contract for government services, and that's what we have now. So the question is, in, in very short time, are we going to see more Medicaid uh, reforms coming up in the short session of this coming legislature? Is the governor just going to go ahead and do it and then ask for either forgiveness or permission later well, the, the on? The legislature didn't say no. It said proceed, but come back and we want to check the next step. It'll be the biggest fight this this coming summer. There are Republicans. Nelson, Representative Nelson Dollar had a, a lot of objections early on. I think there's more there's there's more resistance inside the Republican Party I th in, legislators, and I think people realize. I think the governor is looking <clears throat> at this. I think Carol Steckel and the, those in charge of Medicaid are looking at this, and I think that they will offer some kind of report before the General Assembly convenes in May. Now, what those recommendations are and how forceful they are in those, I don't know, but there is an effort. I think on everybody's part to address these problems with Medicaid and begin to get this under control. The sooner the better. After these messages, economic development reform. NC Span is brought to you in part by the North Carolina Farm Bureau. The Farm Bureau and Agriculture. We keep North Carolina growing. Is your business or trade organization looking for a great North Raleigh address? This beautiful recently updated office building has three spacious offices perfect for law firms, accountants, agencies, and associations of any size. Our beautiful lobby boasts attractive finishes and unique Raleigh artwork. We provide ample parking and quick access to both 440 and 540 right at the corner of Falls of the Noose and Spring Forest Road. Call us today at 919-832-1416 to schedule a tour with the owner. North Carolina is a great place to live, work, and raise a family, but we consistently rank in the bottom third for state health. Poor health choices and inactivity cost our state $54 billion a year, dollars that could be saved through healthier living. We can do better, North Carolina. That's why NC Spin is working with health and community organizations to launch a healthier NC, an education campaign and challenge to live healthier lives. 
Join us at a healthiernc.com. We continue our program on reforms, and in the time that we've got left, I want to go around the table and ask everybody, what reforms can we expect coming in the future, and specifically, what will happen in those reforms? John, we'll start there with you. There were some steps made this session on budget reform, uh, getting the capital budget reorganized, having repair and renovation reserve. I think that can and will continue in the short session. We have to give a better job of managing state buildings and facilities. All right. Right. I think courts are going to be a huge issue in making sure that the IT systems within the courts are addressed. It's a hundred million dollar problem right now. Legislature's going to have to deal with it. Chris? I'm going to say one that I wish we would see, which is redistricting the forum. Republicans, when they were in the minority, were loud proponents of it, uh, as a lot of uh, interest groups on the left and right were. They had a chance to pass the House in 2011. They didn't even take it up in the long session. We desperately need to do this before we get close to the Becky? next census. We didn't even touch on education reform, and I think we're going to see, I know we're going to see more charter school applications and expansion of charter school offering more choices for parents and families and students in North Carolina. So education reform? Yes. Well, we'll be following it. You've heard our spin on the issues of the day to stay informed all during the year, all during the week. Give your feedback and read our weekly column. Visit our website, ncspin.com, or catch NC Spin on Facebook. And we hope you'll join us next week when we'll take on more issues of interest to the people of North Carolina. Until then, stay informed and watch out for the spin. Join us next week and get the spin on issues facing our state.